Hi guys, welcome to my affordable watch collection. My name is Aviv, and today we are taking a look at a bombastic chronograph watch, the suitably named Tsar Bomba TB8204Q. This watch was sent to the channel for free for review via the Tsar Bomba official store on AliExpress, and I don't have to send it back. Keep that in mind. But I'm sure that by now you know you are going to get my own honest opinion of this watch, as I am going to point out what I like about it, alongside what I don't. Not that I think watches should be named after weapons of mass destruction, but looking at Tsar Bomba's catalog, it is clear to see why it is named after the biggest nuclear bomb ever to be designed by humankind. These watches are big, and seem to be inspired by some of horologists most eccentric designs. The TB8204Q clearly homages Richard Mille's style of extravagant watches, but I don't think it copies a specific model one for one. Feel free to correct me in the comment section if you know otherwise. There are now 14 color options available, combining different case and strap colors. Prices differ between the colorways, and they start from $159.99 for the silver colored stainless steel ones, $164.99 for the black and rose gold colored ones, and $189.99 for the two new white colored cases that were added recently. Tsar Bomba kindly provided the viewers of my affordable watch collection with a discount code. Just enter AVIV10TB when you place your order to enjoy $10 off the price of the watch. The packaging is simple yet stylish. The watch comes in a sleeved, reflective red branded cardboard box, and you do get a two years international warranty card and an instruction manual. This is without a doubt a big watch. And if that's not your thing, you might want to look away because here comes the measurements. The width of the case is 42 and a half millimeters, but it does look wider than that due to all the protruding parts and the extra large crown. Its thickness is just under 17 millimeters at its thickest point. The strap is 25 millimeters at its widest point where it emerges out of the lugless case and it tapers all the way down to 20 millimeters at the buckle. The length of the watch from top to bottom is 50 millimeters and the watch weighs 142 grams. It is water resistant to 50 meters. Tsar Bomba are planning to release a new version of this watch in the near future, and that one will be slimmer at 15.5 millimeters instead of the existing 16.8. The dial is about as crazy looking as all skeletonized dials. Going from the outside in, it starts with Arabic numerals printed in white on the 5 minute marks on the upper side of the Rehot ring. Then we have a minute track on the Rehot itself, with loomed 3D shark tooth shaped indices towering over the dial. Then we get to the dial itself, which again is quite crazy. The bottom layer of the dial is CNC cut into all these different bridges and holes and the top layer is some kind of glass or other transparent material that has all the details printed on it. Some large hour markers are present, printed in a hollowed out military font. The brand's name and logo are found at the 3 o'clock position. A date complication is present at the 4.30 position with a red frame around it. And of course, there are the three subdials which all have circular grooved surfaces and sunburst effects. The subdial at the 6 o'clock position has the watches run in seconds hand. The one at the 12 o'clock position is a 60 minutes counter for the chronograph. And the one at the 9 o'clock is a 12 hours counter for the chronograph. That means that you can time up to 12 hours at a time using the chronograph. All subdials have their corresponding markings printed in white with some red details on the 12 o'clock one. The hands are all gunmetal colored, polished and sword styled. The main hour and minute hands are skeletonized and filled with loom on their tips. The running seconds hand at the 6 o'clock subdial is skeletonized and colored blue. The small hand at the 9 o'clock is colored white. 
and the one at the 12 o'clock subdial is red. The center chronograph seconds hand has an arrowhead counterbalance and a blue colored tip. The loom material used on the dial and hands is either C1 Superluminova, which Tsar Bomba used on earlier models, or C3 Superluminova, which is said to gradually replace the C1 on their watches. They weren't sure which one they sent me. So keep in mind that you might get either one of these two options if you order the watch now, September 2022, but are most likely to get the C3 loomed watch if you order it at some later date. In any case, it looks nice and bright at first, but it won't last for a whole lot of time. Covering this crazy dial is a curved scratch-resistant sapphire crystal. I can only imagine that it is harder and pricier to make them in this shape, so kudos to TB for going the extra mile with sapphire. It has some anti-reflective coating applied to it for increased visibility. In addition to that, Tsar Bomba coated the crystal with a quote-unquote high-tech coating to reduce the impact of head-on collisions and make it even more durable. The large, very large, tonu-shaped case is made of 316L stainless steel. It features a mixture of three different finishing techniques. The bezel is mostly vertically brushed with highly polished chamfered edges and 12 screws holding it in place. The sides of the case are bead blasted and the case back is brushed again, again with that high polished chamfered edge. The extra large push-pull crown at the 3 o'clock position is signed with an engraved logo and it sure looks cool with the added light blue metal ring around it, but it's probably this watch's biggest design flaw. I don't think Tsar Bomba meant for it to be like this, but the fact that it is recessed between the bulges coming out of the bezel and the case back and the chronograph pushers makes it virtually impossible to pop it out using just your fingers. You do need to use some kind of tool to pry it out in order to operate it. Anyway, after you do manage to pull it out, the first operating position lets you flip through the days of the month on the date complication, and on the second operating position, you can set the time. The two chronograph pushers at the 2 and 4 o'clock positions are really cool too. They are these elongated trapezoid-like shapes with sort of brushed and polished grill tops, housed in brushed kind of tubes emerging from the side of the case. Yeah. These do operate very well and give a tactile feedback when you push them. Push the top pusher to engage the chronograph, and push the bottom pusher to reset the chronograph. The center seconds hand snaps right back to the zero position. The case back is covered by a curved slate of stainless steel held in place with screws. It has the brand's name and logo laser etched above some of the watch's information, model number, and individual serial number. Here you also find the screws that hold the strap bits in place. We'll get to those in a moment. The movement giving life to this beast of a watch is a Seiko VK67. This is a mecha quartz chronograph movement made in Japan by one of the world's leading movements manufacturer. It combines a quartz module for telling the time with a mechanical chronograph module. Both are operated by the same battery that should give you up to three years of battery life. With a stated accuracy of between plus and minus 20 seconds per month, it is going to be very accurate like a quartz watch and have a sweeping chrono seconds hand like a mechanical one. The strap is made of thick yet soft silicone. It features a rugged and ventilated design that sticks out quite a bit from the case. The way it is designed and drops down does make it wear comfortable on the wrist though. It also features two matching silicone keepers and an extra large and robust stainless steel buckle with a brushed finish and the brand's name engraved on top. The strap is of course color matched to the color way you choose, but the good news is that it is interchangeable with other straps you can buy from Tsar Bomba's store separately. They did send me an extra red strap, so I can show you guys how you change these. 
Remember those screws on the back of the watch? Simply screw them out, take out the strap you want to change, put the strap you want to change it to in its place, and screw the screws back in. Just like that, you've changed the look of the watch. Now for the moment of truth, let's put it on my 7 inch wrist and see how this bombastic watch wears. Well, I did say it was a big boy, didn't I? It wears very big, very tall. That's not my personal cup of tea, as I do generally prefer much smaller watches, but I have to say that for what it is, it was much more comfortable than you'd expect. Though it is probably not a good choice for you if you have smaller wrists, it doesn't overhang off of my wrist and does a good job hugging it. I do think that the slimmer version Sarbomba are planning to replace this one with would be a more reasonable choice, so it might be worth waiting a while for that one to come out. Legibility is a compromise you have to make with pretty much all skeletonized watches, as their dials are usually so busy that it takes a second or two to distinguish the hands from the background. I'd say this is the case here too. The silicon strap is comfortable, and I think it's pretty cool that you get different strap options that you can mix and match with your watch and you are not tied to the same one the watch came on. Let's go over the pros and cons. We'll do the cons first. This watch is obviously not going to be for everyone. It is very large, and that eliminates anyone with smaller wrists. It is very flamboyant. You do have to have a certain taste to rock this one with confidence. Other than that, I've mentioned the impossible to reach crown, and the loom could be better too, although for this type of watch, I don't think it is going to be a deal breaker. On the pro side, I think that the three main selling points that set this watch apart from similar homages are the nice level of finishing on the stainless steel case, the sapphire crystal that has both AR coating and that high-tech hardening coating applied to it, and the Seiko Mecha Quartz movement that is known to be very reliable. If you like the look, this watch is a nice option. Let me know what you guys think of this watch by dropping a comment below. You'll find the link to it down in the description of this video if you want to check it out for yourselves. That is an affiliate link that will generate a small commission to the channel if you do decide to use it. If you do, don't forget to use that discount code to knock down $10 off the asking price. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my affordable watch collection, and hit the notification bell for more affordable watches related content. You can also follow me on Instagram and get to know me and my collection a little bit better, get all the news about the channel, and connect with me on a more personal level. If you've enjoyed this video, you might enjoy one of these two as well. I want to thank Tsar Bomba for sending this watch in for review, and to thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you next time.